In recent years, Stellantis has announced that the Chrysler 300 would be at some point ending production in 2023. And with it being Black History Month, I thought it would be a great idea to explore how one misinterpretation of the Chrysler 300 led to a phenomenon we would never forget. So stick around and stay tuned because you are now watching The Breakdown. If you're new to the channel, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. It does mean a lot to me and the YouTube algorithm if you did. Also, if you're in the market for a car and have not been through the process in a while, my new book, Auto Loan Freedom, does go over the step-by-step -step process on how only not to buy a car, but also how to negotiate as well as how to pay a car from record time. So go over to BrightSpark.com and go get your copy today. And with that being said, let's get to the show. For the sake of efficiency, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know now that I'll pretty much be going over the history of the 300, the design language it came from, it derived from a few of its precursors and the pivotal moment at which hip hop and the 300 met and how it collided to create a phenomenal pop culture, basically a pop culture phenomenon. When Chrysler developed 300 letter series, it was considered a banker's, basically a banker's muscle car. And it was a big bulky car with big doors and fenders and a huge V8, which was honestly unheard of at the time. They really wanted to make sure that for their brand, and Chrysler was known for pretty much performance alongside the Dodge brand, but I don't believe they had merged together quite yet. During its heyday in 1955 up until 1965, the Chrysler 300 had several different letters, as I stated before, A through L, and the 300C was the most dynamic containing the super big V8 and rear wheel drive platform, and it was big, bulky, and made headlines in the way that it presented itself. Now, going forward into 1980s, this is where things get a little murky. So for all of you that know about the Chrysler 300, you also know that the K cars are a big deal for Chrysler and the Chrysler brand and many of the K cars are what led to the uniformity of Chrysler and how it was able to continue to compete against the Japanese competitors alongside Ford and GM one of the big cars being the Chrysler Dynasty and this was an interesting time for Chrysler as in that time they had merged with Renault and began their design language and their improvements on the new platform they were anticipating on making which was the LH platform the LH platform was considered the cab forward design which is typically used on trucks and at this time this was something completely revolutionary because it gave more interior space for the cars and made those cars look much more bigger so to give context of what happened between 1965 upwards to about 1985 the american manufacturers pretty much began to lose their dominance in the markets one of the big key points that happened was the 1973 gas crisis which led more americans to begin leaving their big luxury sedans as we like to call it the big body bands it's not of bands but that's what we called it that led to more people beginning to go over to japanese and german small fuel economic cars and to be honest german cars weren't even really that big of a thing up until the latter portion of the early 80s where it was considered luxury but i digress the american car companies truly began losing their share of the market and the chrysler k cars at the time was one of the saving graces to the chrysler brand the reason why this is all important because we begin to see a transformation and shift into what american consumers wanted from an automobile okay so here's where it gets interesting introduce mr ralph jill for all of you who don't know mr ralph jill at the time was one of the basically the newcomers to the chrysler brand in 1992 he joined the chrysler brand and for all of you who don't know who he is when mr ralph jill joined the team in 1992 they were just injecting the chrysler concord lhs as well as a very interesting model that i'll get to in just a second the cap four design had taken over their lineup and proved to be a success amongst the market because people loved it for its styling they loved the lh platform for what it offered in terms of space and performance and it had some really nice luxury appointments as well but that's not where we're getting yet. 1998 is the critical year for Chrysler as Mercedes-Benz or Daimler AG had decided that they were going to merge with Chrysler Corporation to form Daimler Chrysler. For all of you that don't know who Daimler Chrysler is let me go ahead and tell you Daimler Chrysler was the best mistake that ever happened to the Chrysler brand. And at the time we began to see this merger, this is also when we would begin to see the Chrysler 300M. <laughs> 
1999, we began to see the introduction of the Chrysler 300M. The Chrysler 300M was a continuation of the Chrysler 300 letter series from 1965. But what made this one different was that this one was a front wheel drive based platform, unlike the ones of your, which was a rear wheel drive platform. In honesty, the Chrysler 300M was a nice car to me. I thought it had very well, well, very well tasteful appointments, unlike some of the other cars that I had seen from Chrysler. But it was also a hard distinction and a hard sell between the Concorde and the LHS. And the big selling point for the Chrysler 300M was that it was supposed to be a performance model. And it was a very hard distinction. Now, remember when I told you about Ralph Gill and the interesting merger of Daimler Chrysler? That all ties together right here. So in 1998, after the merger of Daimler Chrysler, Ralph Gill was promoted to head design for the incoming 300 model. Beforehand, Chrysler had already developed a model that they were going to introduce, but because of the merger, Mercedes decided they wanted to have an all new platform, which we would later learn to be the LX platform. But before they could get there, Mr. Ralph Gill had to attain his master's degree from Michigan State University so that he could learn a better management style. Amidst Mercedes wanting to go forward and changing the perception of Chrysler, we would begin to see some very interesting vehicles, one of them being the PT Cruiser. The Pacifica was a big one because that was the first product from Daimler Chrysler as a joint merger. We're gonna go back to 1999 because that ties in together pretty much what is going to happen. During the Daimler Chrysler merger of 1998 and 1999, we would begin to see the introduction of the 300M, as I said before, because the 300 that we know today has not arrived yet. The 300M at its time period was a total of $28,995. Roughly in today's numbers, you can get that for about $52,000, which is kind of pricey for a Chrysler 300. For it to be indistinguishable from the LHS and the Concorde, that's what made it a little more, for all intents and purposes, not worth the damn money. At the time, it was intended to compete against the i30, uh, which I know for all of you who don't know, I just pretty much always think of Jill Yard when I think of those. I don't ever think anybody pretty much wanted those. The Americans were really working hard to try to compete with the Japanese counterparts and it was not working. The 300M was powered by a 3.5 liter V6 that pumped out a whopping 253 horsepower and it went to a four speed automatic transmission which it went from zero to 60 in about 7.2 seconds. And it was good, it was nice, it was plush, but it didn't quite give the pizzazz and umph that Chrysler was known for in its heyday. Now it did have all the standard features such as four wheel disc brakes and independent link suspension, but there was nothing spectacular about it considering the options that it had to go against. And this is what makes the Daimler Chrysler merger interesting because at this point, Ralph Gill is responsible for overhauling this and that's a lot of weight on your shoulders to pretty much take their flagship and to make it better than it already was. According to Mr. Ralph Gill himself, he did not single-handedly design the Chrysler 300. He did it with a phenomenal team who went back and looked at the drawing board and took cues from the original styling and wanted to revitalize the Chrysler nameplate to something that was a little more legendary and a little more significant than we had already seen before. If you don't know anything about Mr. Ralph Gill, he has been designing cars since he was 13. Now what made this interesting is, is that he had to completely revitalize and rechange what we once thought of as Chrysler as a brand. And I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna get to how this misinterpretation of this particular model led to one of the greatest automotive pop culture phenomenons in history. Fast forward into 2002 and Mr. Ralph Gill has gotten his executive MBA from Michigan State University where he learned how to properly manage teams and effectively communicate with his teams. And in 2003, we will begin to see the introduction of the LX form Chrysler 300. What made this different? The Chrysler 300 was considered to be the revolutionary car for its time, considering that it was a rear wheel drive platform that was a derivative of the Mercedes Benz E-Class chassis, because at the time they had sent several associates over to Germany to study E350 chassis and what it looked like to put onto the LX platform. And they would go on to use this platform for decades. Now, I couldn't imagine designing a car back in the early 2000s because to be honest with you, my car would have been a coupe and the 2000s was V6 heavy. We didn't really do four cylinders back then and if you did, they were really slow. And this was the time where V6s were big but bulky and they really weren't effective. And when the 300 drop, it was unlike anything we had ever seen from Chrysler. It was big, it was bold, it was a radical design. And the butterfly here, <laughs> we had no idea what this was gonna become. Can inspiration be comfortable? Can you navigate the world with ease? Yes. 
Does the most passenger room in its class make a difference? Yes. Can a Boston acoustic sound system create harmony? In a word, absolutely. The totally new Chrysler 300, starting at $23,595. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. Now, when this originally came out, it was unlike anything we had ever seen before. It was a rear wheel drive, big by design, and it came with a choice of 2.7 liter, 3.5 liter V6s, pair of them, one of them being 190 horsepower, and the ultimate at the time, a big 5.7 liter Hemi V8, and that was the one that you wanted. At the time that it was released, it had a base price of $23,595, and that totals out to be about $36,722, which is significant cheaper than the 300M we had saw. So what it seems like is that they had converged the LHS, the Concorde, and the 300M all into one singular model, which was more than likely under direction of Daimler Chrysler to consolidate everything. And this is how we get this big fire breathing 5.7 liter Hemi V8 that everybody wanted. And this is the moment. So let me tell y'all the interesting and curious case about the 300. When this originally came out, it was compared often to the Bentley sedan the continental i believe the chrysler was seen as the hood bentley why is this important because this was not the intention of mr ralph Gio. he just wanted to halo the car back to its roots he had no idea that this car that was imported from detroit would be the revolutionary thing that solidified what it meant to be hood rich in the hip-hop community the chrysler 300 was everywhere and it represented a different facet of african-american life it represented that you you too could be as hood rich as you need to be at an economical price. And what we didn't know at the time was that the sales of the Chrysler 300 and the introduction of the infamous Dodge Charger would change the way that we see the Chrysler brand all because we as the African American community perceive this to be what is hood rich. And I wouldn't have it any other way to have experienced what the phenomenon of the Chrysler 300 was in rap videos. There were so many different people cussing customizing their 300s and changing out the rims even on the dub video games there were so many different episodes of the 300 and the redditions of it and that's what made it a pop culture icon even in the era of spinners and cadillac escalades the influence of hip-hop truly helped solidify the chrysler 300 as a as a luxury nameplate in the automotive world all because we thought it was a hood bentley the misinterpretation of this Chrysler 300 alongside the Dodge Charger is how you get the biggest mistake, the best mistake from Daimler Chrysler. Put together the 300, the Charger, the Challenger, the Crossfire, the Pacifica. The Pacifica really was just more of a family vehicle. Low key people hated that car, but whatever. In addition to its popularity, the Chrysler 300 was also a part of hip hop fashion and it became an accessory for many rap artists to portray in not just their videos, but also in things such as cribs as well because we begin to see how the Chrysler is not just a hood Bentley but also it represents what it means to have a flexing mentality and you didn't put it this way if you didn't have a 300 back in 05 to 07 you weren't doing shit boom bam bop bada bop boom pow oh! Now, as I said before, this vehicle was misinterpreted as a hood Bentley, but as we proceed forward, we begin to see more and more introductions of performance cars, such as the Chrysler 300 SRT. We also begin to see the introduction of the Hellcat much later. For all you people that love the Hellcat, this is your time to shine. And that is introduction, the Chrysler SRT 300 had a total of 425 horsepower. That is ridiculous. With an all wheel drive option, available it made sense to get a Chrysler 300 I don't know why anybody didn't have one it was a large sedan it was big it was spacious now I will say the interior quality did not hold up very well towards the latter portion of the years but this particular instance where hip-hop represented the 300 as an aspiration completely changed the trajectory of Chrysler now unfortunately in 2007 the divorce of Daimler-Benz from Chrysler would happen and they would be bought by the Cerebrus Capital Company and you would 
begin to see the struggles of Chrysler. But what makes this interesting is that the Chrysler 300 and Dodge Charger at the time, they were the two cars that held the brand up, up in 2014, where we would begin to see Fiat buy Chrysler and become Fiat Chrysler. And later on, closer to 2018, we begin to see that nameplate change to the Stellantis group. But even still, the Chrysler 300 has only had two generations and still remains the last standing car of Chrysler up until recently in 2023. But from 2023, from 2005, that's quite a bit of time. And the interesting thing is, is that the Dodge brand has flourished as a result of these redesigns and the Chrysler 300 was the first introduced on the market, later the Dodge Charger. And the retroactive muscle cars, in addition to muscle sedans, this is how we get the Chrysler brand that we see today, but more importantly, the Dodge brand, because without the Chrysler brand, you did not get the Dodge brand. The influence of the hip hop community truly supported the idea that you could be fast and furious, even though I hate that movie series. That's what makes it a moment in African-American history. And not to say that there weren't other people buying these cars. There were non-black people buying these cars because hip hop is a culture, not a race, but it is predominantly fueled by African-American culture. And that's what makes this moment so important that a young black man at the time, Mr. Ralph Geo, decided to create and help develop a car that would significantly be a part of a market that would be misinterpreted and ultimately lead to the revolution of the Chrysler brand and Dodge brand more so. If you like this video, feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the Chrysler 300. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos in case you're curious about other brand models and their history and where they led to. With that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later.